previously on Podcast Without Pretense. Man, February 2015 is going to be a great month. I can't believe I ate a whole watermelon and none of the seeds turned into watermelons into my belly. It's called time dilation, and I think if we get it right, our fans will never notice if we miss a week. Mm, that was a good episode, back when we thought we had fans. Yeah, yeah back, when we thought, back when we thought we'd only miss a week. <laughs> <laughs> we almost missed we, a month. We failed we to do that, that, though. Two, what, by three days? Come on. Come on, we should have failed. Last, we should have failed. The last because. episode to go up was January 27th. <laughs> That's good. That means we're, well, we're semi-regular. <laughs> to be fair, though, February is the shortest month. <laughs> <laughs> That's, we need one of those 60-day months so we can do a better job, I think. Anyway, I'm Maya Zaktar. I'm, I'm Jonathan Strickland. And I'm Eric Sandine. And together, and to- we form a loving family. Yes, it's not the most traditional family because none of us live no. together. Um, yeah. And we don't share login passwords and login and passwords for pa- uh, Netflix or Amazon. But no, uh, we talk as often enough as most families. Hmm. We talk like a functional family, actually. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, how have you guys been? It's been a month since we've talked on uh, well, this podcast. Well, I I, just, I survived a health scare. I was hanging out with this uh, this fellow from Atlanta who visited and didn't tell me he was sick, and I hugged him. And so I was freaked out for days after that. Turned out I was okay. Um, to be so. fair, that guy from Atlanta didn't know he was sick at the time. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be Jonathan then, who actually then, visited our first city in New York. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was in New York for a couple of days. And um, uh, while I was there, I came down with a terrible cold, which, which really wreaked havoc on my uh, respiratory system over the last – three days or so four days saturday was the worst i guess so maybe four days but um i'm feeling better yeah so what's important is what's important here is that i'm healthy that's what's that's true so the fact that jonathan's like been sick and recovered (laughs) the fact that i missed it everyone else in that bar the three monkeys dead (laughs) it's it's true that's been shut down i think uh three monkeys by (laughs) uh studio 54 is dead How, how are you eric I'm pretty good. Not sick. Still in Albuquerque. Kind of pissed because it was 70 degrees here last week, and now it's like 40. But other than that, I'm right. Uh, oh, oh, boo freaking who? Boo-hoo. <laughs> 40 yeah, degrees. You know, streets are clear. There's no snow. It's fantastic, actually. Well, we don't have any snow. <laughs> we've, got, we've got sleet and freezing rain coming down in Atlanta. So, Ugh. Yeah. so that's been your yeah. local weather portion of Podcast Without Pretense, which is the... <laughs> right. Normally the focus of this program, as it, as it were. Um, what are we doing this week? What terrible movie did we watch, Jonathan? It was your pick, I think. So, I, well, yeah. So it was a month ago when we did this. And for those who don't know, one of the things we do on this show, in fact, the primary thing we do on this show at this point, is that we pick a terrible movie, preferably on something like Netflix, but definitely something that we all three have access to, legal access to preferably. Uh, we watch this terrible movie and we – test ourselves to see how well we can dedicate our focus and attention to something that's awful. And uh, you can't have any second screens open, can't have any alcohol, you're not supposed to have another person in the room talking to you, you're supposed to try and dedicate your full attention to this movie in an effort to see how far you got. This week, uh, or rather, the last one we picked, Bad Girl Island. Uh, anyone want to take a stab at giving a synopsis about what this movie is about? Sure. I or, watched it. Or, t- should, or, should or do we, we want to do our a, times? T- let's do times first. Uh, Jonathan, how long did you go? 42 minutes, 42 seconds. Eric? Uh, <laughs> 42 minutes, and I did look at the set of seconds, but yep, exactly there. <laughs> I watched the whole fucking movie with no what interruption. What's wrong with you? That's not I, right, man. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean. The first time I checked the time by just pressing the up key, if you want to count yeah. that, eighteen minutes. But that I, I won't count the, that because you're I don't still think that counts. Paying attention, you're still yeah. paying attention to the movie. You're yeah, just I like, did not uh, did not break attention with this movie tonight. And um, synopsis. Okay, so, so it's a documentary about Haitian migrants. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, yeah, it is, once it, you, yeah, <laughs> you see that, when you see the last scene in the film, yeah. Yeah. A, it does have a political slant, but when, 
Okay, so I looked at the Netflix description, and I'm going to try to give that as the synopsis, if I can remember right. it right. It was something about a, uh, actually, I guess it's a, a screenwriter, a writer for movies who gets obsessed with a woman of his dreams, effectively, who turns out to be a real person, and then he is suspected of murder of somebody really close to him. That's what like the Netflix description is. Now, that's, that's almost... That's almost exactly not what this movie is about. <laughs> no, no. This so as far as I can tell, what the do you, Jonathan? You want to give a description of this movie? Because I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. All right. So we've got a douchebag. Mm -hmm. uh, this douchebag is married. He's got uh, a, a a daughter of indeterminate age. I think she's supposed to be a teenager, but she looks like she's well into her twenties. Um, mm. And uh, they, uh, he's living on an island, or at least he's staying on an island in order to work on a movie. Um, you get the feeling like he's supposed to be a screenwriter, although later in the movie he ends up hiring someone else to write a movie. So that suggests to me that he was more of a producer, except he doesn't seem to have a lot of money. He tends to tap other people for money. What I'm saying is that it's a little confusing what the hell this guy was doing in the mm -hmm. film industry. So he's working on a picture out on this Island. His wife is not with him. His daughter, I don't, I guess is on the Island too. I don't know. Anyway, uh, he ends up getting, uh, um, he's, he's out for a swim and he finds a, a young woman being propelled by dolphin power underneath the water. And she appears to be in some distress as she is not currently breathing, seeing as how she's under the water being pushed around by Satan's dolphin, let's mm -hmm. say. It was it was a poor CGI dolphin, by the way. Like, yeah. I, I have a note that says explicitly that. <laughs> poor maybe, CGI maybe, dolphin. <laughs> maybe it wasn't a dolphin, though. Maybe, maybe she was underwater on porpoise. Uh, anyway, mm. so he ends up grabbing her takes her you've back been sitting beach. on that joke for three weeks no i've been sitting on that <laughs> joke for about five seconds because it just came to me uh, cause I, honestly for a moment i was gonna leave out the dolphin and then i wait no you gotta have the damn dolphin the dolphin <laughs> is important um not not in a way that's easy to explain or understand but it is apparently important because it shows up a couple times so anyway he takes the girl onto the uh beach she's this kind of uh, willowy, gorgeous, blonde chick, and he administers uh, CPR. She recovers, seems to have no memory of anything at all. Wait, 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 wait a second. He doesn't actually administer CPR. He just oh, carries right. her. He just lays her on. Yeah, she just, just lays her down on the sand. No, no, I mean, I guess, he lays I guess, her on the bed and then mm -hmm. takes her clothes off. And the other thing <laughs> and is, then she wakes up. <laughs> not once, not once does anybody ever ask the girl, "Hey, are you okay?" or like, "Hey, wake up." Nobody ever says anything to this girl. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'm not going to go reading through my seven pages of notes. Maybe we'll just do this all together because nobody it, 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 tries to wake her ass up until after he strips the girl. Right. And then more – oh, sorry. I didn't want to ruin her name. She wakes up and has no problems with the fact that she woke up in a strange person's bed and is totally naked. Right. Well, and also he, he has called uh, like some emergency medical staff to come and check her out. Yes. And that's when she's awake and she seems okay. And they – is she awake or is she still unconscious at that point when the emergency team checks her out? Anyway, I, either way, they leave her there. They don't take her with them to a hospital. They true. leave her in the guy's house. So uh, so douchebag and naked chick end up um, kind of having this very flirty, weird thing going on. Uh he ends up kind of blowing off his wife who calls him and then decides he's going to take hot chick on a, uh, uh, out onto a, a friend's yacht. And, uh, then she ends up posing as the, the arm candy of his friend because the guy's wife shows up at the yacht. You know, she's delivered by boat to the yacht. So now, Douchebag has got this hot chick that he ha he ca he, ha he can't reveal because his wife's there. So she goes and hangs out with douchebag's friend, who's also a douchebag. Actually, if if there's a guy in this movie, just re assume he's a douchebag, uh, <laughs> unless to unless told otherwise. And you won't be told otherwise because every guy in this movie is a douchebag. Um, so the hot chick and the 
douchebag friend end up getting hot and heavy. And then next thing you know, the guy wakes up and uh, like uh, his fr- uh, the 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 yacht had washed up with no one left alive on it. There's no, there are no bodies, but there's there are messages written in blood and everyone's missing. And he begins to think that perhaps he, he may have witnessed part of this or something and that the girl might be involved, but then realizes the girl is apparently a dream that she was never real, that, that no one else has any memory of her that the whole thing about him having a fling with this chick was a fantasy and that his wife is, doesn't know about it. And from that point forward, the movie gets confusing. <laughs> yeah. More so. Yeah. I mean, this, this, I mean, the, thing about this, the thing about this movie is that there are moments where if you assume that the first – what 20 minutes of this film were 18 that's what i checked no it, yeah it's, <laughs> was it 18 yeah, yeah that's exactly so, what i checked the, so when the, the dream 18, sequence ends <laughs> yeah. okay so the first 18 minutes of this is, is apparently some sort of hallucination that the guy has uh however it's a hallucination that seems to have some some anchors to reality because his douchebag friend in fact has disappeared um and so he's trying to figure out how is this connected to the dream he had? Then he thinks this would make a great idea for a movie. And then he hires someone else to write the screenplay, which makes no sense to me because I thought he was supposed to be a writer, but I guess he's not. So he hires another douchebag to write the, the screenplay and, um, and tells the guy the story and tells the guy the story with his own name as the main character, the protagonist. Yep. So the protagonist <laughs> character ends up finding this devil woman um, and ends up sleeping with her. It's all based off of his quote unquote dream. So his wife understandably gets upset because now, he, now they're making a movie. He's funding the movie with their own money. And the movie is about a character with this guy's name, having an affair with this hot chick. And the hot chick, the actress who comes in and auditions and gets the role of the hot chick, is the hot chick from the dream. <laughs> mm-hmm. So all of this being said, um, you would think at some point, because they're the police are investigating this too. Wasn't there like a videotape of the douchebag friend and the chick kind of yes. making out at yes. some point? So, all right, so and, the, and that, the police. And that's where it gets that. really confusing. <laughs> because right. That's mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, because you're like, wait a minute. So now a videotape evi- – so there's videotape evidence existing from what we thought right. was a dream in the first 18 and minutes. But one something of my notes, actually happened. One of my notes is something to the effect of, wait, didn't he just figure out the girl who murdered his friend? <laughs> and right. like we just gloss over that. It's not <laughs> – yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't at any point say to the police, "Oh, by the way, this this crazy chick that we were that came into auditions, that's the one you might want to ask some questions to." Like, <laughs> and I just take it from here because I can't. I mean, I I could keep going. Right. It's just gonna make me mad. Let's see where we are in my notes. My seven pages of notes here. <laughs> that's honestly what happened with this movie, by the way. Like the last forty minutes of it just made me angrier and angrier as we went. Which, All right, I'm, I'm going to just. Something. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to. Let's see. I don't even remember where, but I'm going to start with page three. How about that? Because this is going to sound familiar. Uh, Mike Pace is using using this experience as a movie script. So this movie is about a writer writing a movie script about the events that are unfolding in the movie you are already watching. Okay, so then we, we, we cue Brolin. Terry Bomba is his name. Casting call time, doing lines that we heard already. They are recycling dialogue. So I'm starting to get angry, by the way. And right. now Morning is in to read the play because her name was Morning, the, uh, right, the blonde chick. chick. The chick. But yeah. her name right now as the actress is Simone Stick. Delatre. Uh, Simone. Yep, that was it. Yeah. She's got a, a heavy <laughs> southern accent. The same motherfucking dialogue again. I have a recycled logo. And then have, so what about Harry Sugar? Because this Harry Sugar is the douchebag friend who died by, by the hands of what looks to be Simone. Or at least it was, Simone was there at the night. Now Simone is wearing the white dress from the first time we saw her, I think. And Sherry is jealous and angry because maybe Michael shouldn't have used his and Charlotte's names in the script. So apparently Michael was writing the script. 
apparently. And he right. named everybody the same, and they said it in the house. Now a band is playing a song about being a song. That pissed me off. Uh, Constable Crick recognizes Simone. Old Terry Bomba is hitting on Stacy. Stacy's the daughter, right? Which one was Stacy? Right. Oh, that's right. That's right. So also, my, there's my there's the son daughter. who's apparently I don't know, like forty at least. Oh, right. and yeah, right. Peter. <laughs> yeah, and and like the funny thing is, I watched the second half of it today, and so I started somewhere mm-hmm. around like forty five minutes because that was it was like right after I stopped, and like the, he's talking to his son, and I'm ju- I just remember thinking, wait. I don't even remember a son from the first half of the film. <laughs> well, they show Peter yeah. like in this one picture, like on a on a dresser or something, and like that's he's right. like in that's a, why in I a swimming to pool. Not him being forty, yeah. And I'm like, why? Yeah, why is there a? Is that his grandfather he's talking about? Is he accidentally calling him his son? I didn't understand that either, until Peter becomes a very important part of the of the movie, and I don't think we actually get a proper introduction to him at all. All right, so where are we? Same motherfucking dialogue. Sherry's jealous. Now a band is playing about a song. Constable Crick recognizes Simone. Old Terry Bomb is hitting on Stacy. The singer in the band, Seamus, is playing the mic part. One question allowed for the whole press event. They're like, any questions? One question. That was the only one. Mike is jealous of Seamus. Jacob is Mike's brother. Very natural exposition yelling after a car, where you're going, I'm your brother. I quite actually enjoyed that. I thought that was a good way of doing exposition because <laughs> we're only about an hour into the movie and we have no idea that Jacob is his brother. So, you know, I mean, I don't often go to my brother. You know, you're my brother. So I thought that was kind of neat. What, uh, one, Mike, other element, one other element I want to throw in here just because we haven't mentioned it yet is that uh, when, when, the, when Mike goes to the scene of the crime of the empty yacht, this is before all the movie stuff happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he goes there, he is confronted by a Haitian yelling at him in French and he doesn't understand what it is, but he gets a picture of his family with like various things drawn on like X's or horns or whatever. And he, he considers it like some sort of threat. And, uh, that's important because the Haitian connection pops up throughout the film. Well, in see, ways yeah. that don't make sense. Yeah. The, the Haitian yeah. I've called in my notes, <laughs> newspaper man. I assume I call him newspaper man because we never get his name. He never speaks in English. We we never get subtitles. Nobody ever explains his actions until like the very end and they kind of give you an idea. But there's no clue as to what's going on at that point. So uh, Mike Pace is peeping in on Seamus and Simone practicing their sex scene and off comes Seamus' pants. We've seen too much of Seamus' ass, by the way, in this movie. Uh, Yeah. Pace peeks closer. Seamus' girlfriend shows up just before Simone could kill Seamus because she had like a knife she was pulling out of under the bed. I, I have a note for that scene that literally says, oh, I hope she kills him because that would at least make this interesting. <laughs> and then it that, doesn't happen. <laughs> it, doesn't, it didn't happen. Uh, clearly, Simone sees Michael Pace uh, peeking in. They are shooting at the house. I thought it was just described as the house. So they're actually shooting all the scenes, right. the sex scenes at Michael's house, which is... A great way to get your wife pissed at you, by the way. Simone is really loud in bed. Shelly is not happy. Seamus' girlfriend is also not happy. Music montage scene. So we are rewatching horrible, scenes. Horrible, horrible music montage. That one was bad. <laughs> we are watching scenes being reenacted in the course of the movie. So we've already seen these scenes once as they played out in the dream and or other scenes. Now we're watching reenactments of it. So I'm just, I'm pissed at this point. Uh, Haitian girl <laughs> goes to Stacy. That's the lady. Without, uh, we get a flashback to, I'm not sure what we, we're seeing. So the Haitians have a thing against the paces. Bomba's got pictures of what we saw at the flashback. So now we actually have plot development of like, okay, what's actually happening in this movie? Right. Okay, now we're going further into voodoo. The goat's dead. Nope, it was a movie scene. So they play with us from time to time. They're like, okay, this is a movie scene and this yeah. is the actual scene. Yeah, Shelley's- which, which you their their attempt is to be edgy and in, and interesting. Instead, it gets muddled and confusing. Yeah, yeah. it's bad. It's, it's really bad storytelling. <laughs> um, so we got we got Shelley spots the Haitian girl and follows her. Shelley's the wife of uh, of um, Mike. By the way, way too many S's in this thing. There's Shelley. There's Seamus. There's Stacy. And there's another S I'm forgetting. Simone. Simone. Okay, so Shelley uh, she goes. Shelly goes and follows the girl. She's also, got a Simone's huge- access, uh, accent completely gone at this point. It yeah, never so comes back. <laughs> Simone claims that she's in character, and she like freaks out a whole bunch of times. So when she freaks out, you think her southern accent will come back. Never does. Um, Interesting not- thing, though. She is a Georgia native. 
The actress, the yeah. actual actress who played the character, is a Georgia not, native. Not the spirit of the ocean, as we'll find out later. Spoiler, sorry. Um, no, the the actress was not the, as far as I know, the spirit of the ocean. So, so in a movie scene, in a movie scene, Brittany uh, Seamus's girlfriend kills Seamus. Oh, but she used a real knife. Okay, now my notes are getting larger because I'm just getting angrier. Constable Crick is the one of two police officers in this entire place. Somebody call Singham. And the second one. The second one is so symp- sympathetic toward the Haitians that she's essentially like, well, just fuck y'all. Like, <laughs> pretty, much- <laughs> pretty much she's on her own. Uh, Pace thinks Simone is an evil spirit, and he's telling Terry Bomba that. Terry Bomba watches footage of someone overboard. Simone hits, uh, hits Terry, uh, Terry's place because she doesn't like the storm. Fucking boring. Seamus was stabbed, and this is boring. It says very big in my notes. <laughs> So even I when think my, my my note after Sheamus got stabbed is, oh, it wasn't a trick knife. Gotcha. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and as far as I know, I think he dies, and we don't really mention. They just kind of gloss over that. They don't just say like, did he survive? Did he not survive? Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, there, so there's the, like the a five second that, scene, <laughs> and then they're yeah. like, well, he's dead. So you yeah, know, <laughs> the reason why we're we're even going over this is that Sheamus, the character of Sheamus, is supposed to be stabbed. Or, uh, or the character that Seamus is playing in the movie within a movie is supposed to be stabbed, and they are supposed to use a, a retracting knife, and the knife doesn't retract, and so he gets stabbed for realsies. Uh, the actor, the in the movie right. playing the <laughs> other character, right. gets stabbed for realsies, and um, this also made me wonder, like, where the fuck did the scene come from? Because that wasn't in the dream, like, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, why is this in the movie? Or, like, did you just say like, well, the dream can't be a full movie? That would be like what, eighteen minutes? Let's <laughs> add out the rest. <laughs> All right, so then we got so when, even when Simone is scared, she's still masking her southern accent, like I mentioned before, because it's driving me nuts. So she's out in the rain barefoot, and her feet aren't wet. I guess this actually makes sense as the movie progresses, now that I think about it. She controls some kind of water. Ew, ew, ew. Uh, Terry and Simone flirting. Okay, Haitians <laughs> tried to board a yacht. I finally got something going here. Stacy giving Terry crap over telling the story slash exploiting all these dead people. So there's some kind of cover-up. One hour, 14 minutes, and 11 seconds. I checked the time. Just shit. Yep. <laughs> Simone falls into the water, holds on. They're shooting a movie scene. Simone falls, in, falls into the water. She's playing some kind of spirit. Uh, holds on to a raft, smiles to pace. Uh, let's see. Divers look for, for Bomba. Refugees jumped up to Harry's boat. This is what the flashback was about. Peter shoots oh, okay. people to. Hang on, though. You got you, looking for Bomba. You're skipping some stuff that makes what you're <laughs> saying is it. making no sense. <laughs> Simone falls into the water appears oh, to right. be sinking and thus Terry, the director of the movie, the super creepy director who's been hitting on both Simone and Michael's daughter dives in after her. Mm-hmm. Then she pops up totally okay. And Terry is nowhere to be found. Right. So and there's some video footage. Sequence means there's some video there's footage, footage of like hand, pulling. Yeah. 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 And the, I love it's constable. Crick. He's just like, they're just hands. Look at anybody's right. hands, hands, Hands. Yeah. That's, he says it like eight you're times. Like, like, yeah, you're like, wow, CSI, you know, the Caribbean is not the place you want to be, right? <laughs> like, this guy is, this guy's like, eh, hands could be anybody's. So, even, so yeah, apparently, it's in the even ocean. when, <laughs> when Bomba <laughs> appears to be. When Bama appears to be dead, I no longer care. That's how how little my notes like care about this at this yeah. point because it's because like. Nothing is really happening. So, so this is the whole flashback scene. Refugees jumped onto Harry's boat. Peter shoots people to protect Stacy. Stacy is given a baby, refugee. And I guess a refugee's baby. I don't the think the baby. baby into the ocean. Stacy throws a baby overboard, which is one of the right. most awesome scenes you'll see in a movie today. Um, all on a boat. So everybody who tried to board the boat died. They were shot. Peter is talking about his father. And now I have a note here. Is Peter Peter Pace? When was this established? The one picture we saw of this guy? Because we right. see him walking around. Nobody goes, hey, son, or hey, Pete, that he's the same should, guy. Because he was no, away in college. Like yeah. There's like yeah. scenes where like he's on the movie set and he's hitting on mm-hmm. the girl or something. And yeah. then, yeah, we get to some point where it's like, wait, he has, that's the son? This is, 
Okay. There's, <laughs> there's also something I want to point out in that the daughter doesn't resemble remotely the actors playing the mother and father. Oh yeah, so I had a I had a Michael, note about that too. <laughs> so what, yeah. what did you say the wife's name was Shelley? Is that it? Shelley, yes. All right, so Michael and Shelley bear no resemblance to Stacy. Like there's no nothing. Yeah. Like they, they you're like well, this may I mean maybe she's adopted. She That's could be a adopted. possibility. They don't they don't explore that. The, it would have been an awesome moment for Michael to turn to Stacy once they found out about this terrible part where the Haitian uh, refugees are trying to board the yacht and then the uh, Harry Sugar and, and Peter end up essentially killing several of them and Stacy throws a baby over. That would have been a perfect moment for Michael to look at Stacy and say, oh, you're adopted. That would have been a great <laughs> moment. Totally wasted. All right, so we got Simone now gunning for Peter, lures Peter to the water, says, follow me. Peter went under, is it Sugar? Somebody looked dark-haired. I'm like, well, maybe, they, maybe they're going to bring back Sugar because that would be kind of neat. They don't, by the way. Pace threatens to kill Simone if she doesn't tell him where Peter is. Beach goer tries to intervene because Michael isn't just trying to get the answer of Simone. He is choking her and saying, die, bitch. Die. Tell me where he is. Like, he's literally choking this woman underwater and whatever. Um, let's see. Beach guy tries to intervene, can't find Simone. He goes, I think it says something like, I guess you killed her, you bastard. And he just walks away from the guy, which I have no idea. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this guy, yeah, the, the, the random Good Samaritan is very confusing in the fact and that he's just I like, would, oh, well, all right. <laughs> I call him the, I call him the not-so-good Samaritan. <laughs> all right, fair enough. <laughs> he was the sort of good beachgoer. Okay, so we have uh, beachgoer. Peter pops up out of the water. Pace is being arrested for killing Simone. But that's not Simone. The body they found was Stacy's. Pace yeah. blames Jacob because Jacob was told to stay with Stacy. He's expressly screamed to him, stay with Stacy. He actually had to tell him twice in the movie because he's like, should I go with you? He goes, no, stay and protect the girl. So Stacy's dead. Too many S's. There's my thing. Caption fail. This is how bored I am in the movie. Your siren instead of Y-O-U-R. They actually had Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. Have to, so at some point, I don't know how this happened. So Shelly's talking to Crick, who is the constable, and they are somehow – they're going with the idea that Simone isn't a real person to have to prove that Simone is still wait, to have to prove that Simone is still what have to prove she's not a real person. Oh, they have to prove that Simone is not a real person. I don't understand how that makes any sense. Uh, the remaining Haitians yeah. uh, are saved by some white dressed woman who's supposed to be Simone. That's why she's tied to these people. So finally, we have Crick. He's in his car, and he's looking on this island close by where Simone was found. Not Simone, sorry. Morning was found in that dream. And Simone appears, like, on the beach, and she's ghostly, kind of flickering. Uh, and then and then he takes down his binoculars because, like, this gets weird and white and flickery. And Simone is right in his face. Simone slash ghostly appears. Yellow cat eyes tells Crick to go. Epilogue. Eight. Eight million people seeking sanctuary. And then it says here, and I am very proud of what I wrote, what in the actual fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So because, the movie ends. Sorry, this, yeah, this, my, movie, this, this movie ends with a political message about how, how there are so many Haitian refugees who die uh, while trying to flee to some other place, which is a valid thing to say except for the fact that it has – so little to do with this movie. I mean, yeah, ultimately, whatever the 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 series of events that led to this vengeful spirit uh, attacking Michael, who, by the way, had nothing to do with any of the fucking yacht stuff. Like it, right. it was his daughter there. and his son, but he had nothing to do with it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's a douchebag, but he's an innocent douchebag in this in this <laughs> respect. So. Like, anyway, the Haitians had so little to do with this movie. Like, if you were to add up all the moments that involved the Haitians, you're talking maybe six, seven minutes of the whole movie. And, and then they the kept parts, it at the end. Like, there's, like, like this and the movie was do have to do with the Haitians. The parts that do have to do with the Haitians are them making fun of them in the movie by doing, like, rit ritualistic practices. Well, there's some of that. But I was thinking mainly of, like, the – tracking down the girl and then getting oh, yeah, totally. to the police officer, the female police officer. Um, and, uh, and then also the raid on the yacht. But 
Th yeah, that that stuff barely happens. This this is supposed to be. It's being billed like it's an erotic thriller. It's not erotic and it's not thrilling. It is confusing. It it, it is disjointed. It is poorly made. There are moments where I thought, did they edit this goddamn movie out of order? Like, did they decide to put the middle of the film in the beginning of the film, or did they decide like, oh, after shooting this, they're like, well, this doesn't really make sense. Let's just Let's uh, let's redo some of this, but uh, let's not get rid of the stuff we've already you know shot. What? You're right. How do you we know, get to the was... point where there's that ending, though? How do we get to the point where we have a white text ending about Haitian immigrants? Like, when did that editing decision happen? That's when I'm. Get, that's when I got confused. Because this is obviously I... somebody who didn't check the final edit. Someone's like, right. "Yeah, for sure, <laughs> sure, it's fine. Just do the job." And the guy's like, "I'm just going to put something really, really deep at the end. Let's see if anybody notices." Nobody watched right. this movie. Anybody who had anything to do with this movie, and my first page of notes, which we skipped, and Tony Sabato Jr., I'm like, does he have a tramp stamp? Yes, he does. He has a tramp stamp, uh, which I thought was very odd for a, a, a male model, but this movie was just so unbelievably bad. But now that Jonathan mentions this, it seems like it was edited out of order. I could see that. Like, if this movie started where he was writing a script, you had the main character writing a script with Terry Bomba working on a, on a movie about Haitian refugees, right? And then they're like, let's get this actress. We've got to do a casting call. This girl shows up, and he kind of really likes her. She, he then dreams of her in this crazy way, uh. and they start putting those elements into the movie. Then that makes sense. Hold on. But, I want to recut this movie. Like, <laughs> I think we can because I don't think anyone's going to notice. <laughs> no one's going to notice. Copyright law be damned. I don't think anyone's going to be coming <laughs> after our derivative work of this piece of shit. <laughs> the... Uh, all right, so who do you think wins sleaziest character in this movie? Because I think it's... Bomba. I think, do you? I think it's between yeah. him and, and Michael because the two of them are both pretty big sleazebags. Michael, but you know, the thing is, Michael, like, after a while, he's, like, trying to... He's jealous at first, but then trying to warn everyone about this evil that he's brought on to them. Like, yeah, but only, the other thing only is... like, in the last ten minutes of the goddamn movie... <laughs> But well. like the, the first 18 minutes were a dream. So as sleazy as he was in the first 18 minutes, it was all not real. It wasn't so, real life. <laughs> but you get a pass. The, then he meets a girl who resembles the girl in his dream, and he's just as sleazy then. Like Oh, because he peeps on her? I guess it's pretty sleazy. And, well, yeah, and he's a married oh, yeah, man. And he's got a grown daughter who, again, looks like she's much older than what? I think they were portraying <laughs> that her is pretty as. Sleazy. But Bamba goes then, after uh, Stacy, it looks like, and yeah. this young actress, which is even... Is he going just, after her? That's the thing. Is like, I, don't, I don't think he's going after her when we see that scene. I think we just don't have the frame to interpret it with. Because he's okay. talking... He's talk, Because he talks to her about the boat or something like that. He mentions yeah, you're right. it. So, Good point. Yeah. He was on board the boat. All right, so let's, let's look at this. This is us trying to make sense of this goddamn movie. And I think it's more than what this movie deserves. Which we're, we're doing this more than okay. the production crew was doing. Yeah, because, because <laughs> trust me, you watch this movie and you're like, there are some conclusions we're going to have to leap to because there's no <laughs> direct pathway there. So, guys, the actual incident where the Haitians tried to board the yacht and were fought off and killed, uh, here are some questions for you. Who was actually on the yacht when that happened? So Terry, the director, was on there. Stacy was on there. Was it Peter, the name of the yep. son? That's yeah, Peter? Peter's yeah. the guy who shoots there. everybody. Right. Harry Sugar was on there. Yes. Michael was not on there, nope. right? Because otherwise he wouldn't. He would have known about it as opposed to this being a big reveal later in the movie. Right, so he was because, not on the because he sees that footage, which like there's there's the footage is really only mentioned the one time, other than the director watching it. In which case, it doesn't even make sense when he's watching it, because so there's no connection between that footage. Right, right. So, so the Haitians try to board, they get killed or whatever, throw a baby into the ocean. Yay! Mm -hmm. uh, the, now at that point. Did, was Harry killed on the boat? I can't remember how this worked because I don't remember. I haven't watched oh. it for a month. Like, oh, I see what, what you're saying. How, 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 was the yacht, how did the yacht end up being abandoned? 
because they found the yacht floating abandoned. And there was no one aboard it, and it had all these sick things. Oh, they, they all just on. got off on it. They, I think they all just got off on like a pontoon boat or something. Because if I like the end of that scene, when we when we get to see the full scene, right before she throws the baby overboard, I, he is, I believe, telling Stacy to get into like uh, a, you know a life raft or something like that. I assume that's how everybody exited the 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 yacht or at least that's how our characters exited the yacht the haitians of course did not exit the yacht so all right okay like i i I remember that being like a five seconds of a scene that i I, yeah i think just got off on like question my next question is when was the video footage of simone and harry shot and who shot it because in the dream, it was Michael. In the dream, Michael went onto the yacht, Harry's yacht, mm-hmm. with mourning, right? And then his wife, Michael's wife, shows up. Shelly shows up. Michael sends mourning to go with Harry so that Shelly will think that mourning and Harry are an item and won't pick up on the fact that Michael is totally boning mourning. So mourning and Harry go down and Harry gets all sleaze bag on her and she seems to like it. So they start getting hot and heavy. Uh, this is where you figure that morning is really a morning person. Um, and so then Michael ends up going down there. Like they, I guess they had set up a camera to shoot what was going on and morning was aware of it. Is that think, what was happening? But it was, it was moving footage. So I, I don't think it was a stationary camera. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I'm well, not 100% sure. <laughs> to be fair, they were on a boat. That's, That's true. true. So. But, but the, the, motion did, the motion of the ocean didn't seem to match the other motion of the ocean. Is right. Problem. So <laughs> when, well, when it came to... Well so here's, here's what I, I thought about the timeline on this one. So there is an, a note where Bamba says to Stacy, like, how long it's been since he saw her last. And I want to say he said over a year. Like it was like one year, six days, and thirty something, or six months and thirty something days, or or so, thirty so days. So this whole thing happened a year ago. So that's what I was thinking. So that whole mm-hmm. event happened a year ago. Harry Sugar, I don't know when he hooks up with Simone slash Morning slash the girl from oh, whatever the hell the show is called. It, it um, would have have to. It would have had to have been a long time ago because the girl who notices is the baby, who uh, who's thrown into the ocean. No, there was a girl who saw the baby. Right? It's not. The, the no, no, gets, no. I think that's the baby. Or no? No. Because the, no, there's footage of the girl up, seeing what's happening. The, the baby ah. grows up to be a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the girl that gets thrown overboard is not the, the, you're right, the little girl you're right, we see later on. You're totally because, right. There was somebody there's who was... footage of that girl. Plastic. Yeah. But I, then again, yeah. wait a second. So, I just I remember something. So some the, the, the person who saved the Haitians was Simone. That's I think that's actually in the canon of this movie, which means after she saved the people, Harry was probably the only person left on the boat because it's his boat. She then boned him and then killed him because. Wait, no, that doesn't make sense. I as wait, wait, how make sense? Go ahead. Explain why. OK, wait, that whole year ago thing doesn't make sense at all. Here's why. Beginning of the movie, Michael's got the dream. 18 minutes in, Michael wakes up, gets a phone call. The yacht has been found. Yeah, the cops show him the, the footage from the yacht. So right. it had to have happened within the context of the movie. Do you, are you saying that from the moment that the yacht is found to the moment when they start shooting the movie, a year has passed? Because there's no mm-hmm. indication in the movie that that much time has passed in the film. I think – okay, I don't know if there's a year passed in the thing. So she could have – Simone could have showed up six months ago, three months ago, two days ago. I don't know when she decided to kill everybody. Um, but, but see, six months makes sense because at the end, Simone did but, die in Georgia <laughs> six months and, before the end of the movie. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, though, because Michael and Harry are friends and Michael had talked to Harry not that long ago. <laughs> oh, that's right. He left a message the night before. Oh, so, yeah. he, so, so Simone – it can't okay. have happened that way. Okay. <laughs> Good, good. This uh, this is good. This this helps me. So we, I'm going to say the the events happened a year ago. Simone then kills him that night before because then so is she, when she goes on a rampage to kill everybody. Right? She wants she to take a, on. So she waits a year to get revenge on the dude who did this thing. 
Well, she's got to figure it out. She doesn't know who's on the boat. She's yeah. in charge of the whole sea, damn it. She's killing lots of people. There's a fucking list. Yeah, was, she had like this whole thing with Aquaman. How many, how many, wait a second. Now, how many Haitians were killed in this movie? And how many did she have to avenge? Like a hundred or eight well, million? Ayaz, I forget the number. Ayaz, you and I both read that, that card at the end of the movie. <laughs> a lot. Too many. Too many have died. So, yeah, so she was busy That's doing that. So, so this movie, okay, appeared to be a regular, um, based in reality kind of movie, turned into like somewhat of a mystery movie, and then a somewhat political movie, a cover-up movie. And a, and a supernatural movie. And it yeah. ends with a supernatural twist of, did, did you really want to go with that as your ending? Because like the green screening <laughs> is bad, and the, 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 but, the I mean, shitty effect is bad. I think we've probably like, gotten across the fact that it is just confusing as hell. I mean, it's it's not like it's even it's not that it's that complicated a story. It's just told so poorly that you can't quite tell what the intent was or what the continuity is or it's it's everything feels like it's being done to make it seem mysterious. You know, like like the audience needs to work for it in order to figure out the what's going on. I have no objection to that approach. It's just this one fails because it's just so clumsy that ultimately like, well, nothing's really going on. And what is going on is contradicting half of the other stuff. So yeah, it was, it was really bad. And, and, who, and, and whose pick was this again? Whose pick was this, Jonathan? It was mine, but you go, know what? Listen here, assholes. This movie was nowhere <laughs> near as bad as some of the other ones that we've picked, including the ones that you two guys have picked. I, now, tell me, I don't know. Tell, this was pretty bad. This tell one, me truthfully. I ask, tell me truthfully. This was, this was close you, to like – I'm trying to think of like when we've, we've seen movies where we're like – I'm sure we've seen an Asylum movie, and I know that Jonathan has said this about movies we've watched recently that I've picked, that like they, they had the material to make a good movie. It's like somebody was trying to make this badly, and they didn't care. This pile of shit. I don't feel like they were trying to make this badly. I just feel like they were inept. That's what I'm saying, I though. Like, yeah. This movie... Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So would you boring. Rather, would you rather have to watch this again or Don't Go in the Woods? Oh, that's you have easy. To pick don't, one. Uh, don't Go in the Woods uh, is not happening again. So there you go, assholes. This movie is not <laughs> nearly as bad as some of the ones no, you wait, assholes have wait, picked. I, Wait, wait, nearly as bad doesn't mean it's worse. Nearly means it's pretty close. I'm just saying, like, it's that level. If, if you're comparing it, the best thing you got is don't go in the woods, and that's a pretty low bar, man, because that I movie really sucked. Ones. I can pick up other ones. Daddy Can't Dance was pretty awful. I would watch that you again. Know, I would watch Daddy Can't Dance over I would watch A Talking Cat six How times. Another, uh, to watch <laughs> yeah. By the way, <laughs> All right, here you go. I want to take issue with... Frame. Strange that sucked. Frame. Okay. Are you... Uh, uh, I probably I don't. This is probably equal <laughs> equal suck equal suck is the word I'm gonna yeah, use. Yeah, I'm here. like fifty fifty on that one, honestly. So here's like, here's I, the thing I had. Here's another problem I have with this movie, by the way. Bad Girl Island implies there's an island of bad girls, or at least an island where they keep a bad girl. She's not really an island girl so much as she belongs to the sea. So she's not even into the land. She does all her killing in the water. What the fuck? There, it had a different title originally, or, it, or was there it? is an alternate title. Yeah, I think it actually. It's like, I like read Sirens the, of the Caribbean or Sirens Samoan yeah, was, of the Sea. I bet there I was there Siren was one the critic review on IMDb, and I read it, <laughs> and it was not really a critic review. It was like if I if I put up reviews on my website, <laughs> I I could be a critic according to the way they're classifying these. Kind of like what we're doing right now. We're critics. So this yes. is going to be on the. On there somewhere, man. That was just not a. Anyway, so well, anyway, uh, it was that was that was my turn. So someone else gets to go now and pick a different. Who, movie. Whose turn is it? Eric's turn now. It has Who's, to be. I, th- I think it is Eric's turn actually. Okay, now, so. Hmm. You have any idea what you're gonna pick? I have two on the list that I think were gonna be picks. So I have Evolver, which is a 1995 movie. Evolver. Yeah. Uh, As in to evolve. Right. right. Uh, a teen computer whiz wins a chance to play a live version of his favorite video game, unaware that he's pitted against a robot programmed to kill. <laughs> uh, All right, that this actually pretty has, awesome. 
this has three stars for me, so it might be all right. <laughs> and it's rated R, uh, so it might be all right for you. Yeah, we have got a long history of movies that that Netflix thinks genuinely thinks that Eric's going yeah. to love, and they have been some of the worst <laughs> things we've ever watched. Okay, so it's got okay. a, it's, it's, it's got, got a five speaking. five on IMDb. It's giving so me one point six. For my for my prediction, one point six. For, right. for my P, for my PWP account, which has a profile which oh, has God. me rating the worst movies very highly, it gives me three and a half stars. So now, this is gonna suck. I also see that among the cast, one person in there, a name leaps out at me. John uh, Delancey is in this film. John. Do you not know John Delancey? No. Well, I'm do, seeing you guys want to do a search. City. Um <laughs> Okay, so John Delancey, also known as Q oh, from Star Trek Q. The Next yeah. Generation. Yeah, but Ethan Embry's in this. You guys don't know Ethan Embry? I don't know the name, but I'm sure I know who he is. You I think done. he's the kid from Can't Hardly Wait. Uh, the lead. Uh, you right about that? Yeah, yeah, that's him. Elephant well, it was 95. So, yeah, so was, is this, is this we're, we're going to watch or did you want to mention what the other one was or do you, would you rather just go ahead and let's let's put this down and you save the other one? Oh, we can do time. that. I have that. Uh, I think the other one I had was. Oh, no, the other one I don't know on my list is the uh, Twist of Faith, which is one of the Lifetime movies that uh, Ayaz had mentioned. Oh. That one, Twist of Faith. I don't know if I've actually watched that one. I don't but know. Who's on the cover? Know. Ayaz and I got, had a conversation uh-huh. Tony in Braxton. New York about, about <laughs> that one. I haven't his, watched. I held that one. Yeah. We've talked to I've talked to Ayaz about his him being uh, incredibly irresponsible with his lifetime movie viewing when we could be saving that for this show. Yeah. I, I think you should have just stopped at lifetime. That would have been good. You've been highly irresponsible <laughs> with your lifetime. And I was like, yes. <laughs> that's that's also that was true. An, but another discussion I'm, we had. I am I am so excited. By the way, apparently for the Razzies. Uh, yeah, I, well, I, I sent that to you on Twitter. That's um, not a link. Yeah. yeah, Christmas. Uh, what, what the hell was the title of that movie? Ward Whatever. Cameron uh, Saves Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was it? Uh, worst Picture, Worst Actor, and like two other awards. Worst Duo. It was Kirk Cameron and his ego. And <laughs> yeah. I... I am so upset that we can't get this movie legally just yet, and yeah. I'm, and we missed the theatrical run. And by the way, since I, I happen to talk to the people at Netflix every now and then, Fireproof, the movie yeah. starring Kirk Cameron, where he's trying to, uh, I guess, repair his marriage because it's oh, falling apart. Is it getting apart. pulled soon? It's getting pulled by the end of March. So oh. if you guys want to watch it, Fireproof is going away. It's like two hours and like 20 minutes. It's like one of the longest fucking movies you're going to watch. Well, what I would suggest, have you seen it, Ayaz? You yes, I have. Watch it already? I watched it over the course of two days. Oh, you watched it. Wow. Yeah, because like, I was about to say, Ayaz, you can pick it for the next time, but you've already watched it, and I am not letting you pick a movie you've already watched. <laughs> I, th- I think just, we could change I think we can fair. change the rules for Kirk Cameron, okay? You can't. I, you can't. I think it's Says acceptable. the man who already watched it. <laughs> so, I'm okay. You have to watch it again, and Ayaz's notes have to be what we go by for that episode. Okay, they're going to be the most disti- most uh, <laughs> distinct and uh, well written because I've seen the movie once. And by the way, it's not to spoil anything; it's kind of slow. I guess. Well. I guess we can. I guess we can do this for Ayaz, seeing as how we once pulled that horrible trick on him, where we made him watch a movie. And watch <laughs> <laughs> this Man, could be. This could be our way of saying s- okay. That was that circus movie. I still forget the name of it. To this oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you know it's great. I didn't watch it. I don't even think Jonathan watched it at all. No, did you? I, I'm it the is, only person who watched it. I didn't so, watch a goddamn minute of that movie. And I still remember my reaction when you told me that. I laughed out loud because it was so strange, and I had such pleasure explaining <laughs> this movie to you guys because it was, it was so odd. It was so very odd. Some circus oh, family. Um, <laughs> yeah, they were trapeze artists or something, right? Yeah, yeah, and it was like this Italian movie that was dubbed, and only like one <laughs> one Italian actor was used to dub his own lines because he could speak English really well. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm really sad we made you watch that instead of watching it for the show. Yeah. <laughs> it I mean, amazing. you guys are you guys are free to watch whatever the hell it was called. I, I know no. I know it's in Jonathan's document somewhere. I'm sure. Um, okay, is it? I don't know if I, I don't actually know if I wrote that one down because, like we we pointed this out in previous episodes, 
Uh, there are several movies that I never even bothered writing them down in the uh, spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet has <clears throat> has uh, 40 entries in it, and I know we've watched more than that. Oh, yeah, we've watched so, I'm not going to go back through it. Every time I do this, I go back through the list, and then we start reminiscing yeah, about the terrible movies we've we watched. We don't have time for that. We don't need a clip yeah, show right yeah. now. <laughs> so we'll spare that. Yeah, it's time to. I think it's time to wrap up. Sure. Uh, let's take a look at next week's, or, sorry, next episode of Podcast Out of Pretense. You know, I think we're going to win a Webby when Neil Patrick Harris is the host of the award ceremony. Have you ever noticed that Neil Patrick Harris looks like Beavis and Cumberbatch looks like Butthead? <laughs>